mini PC equipped with an N100 CPU. What's better, Windows or Linux? Let's compare various aspects, focusing on performance. Subscribe to PC Easily with this helpful information for beginners and experienced users alike. Recently, I reviewed this interesting mini PC with more details and performance tests. If you live in Ukraine, you can buy it from me, link in the description. A great computer for its price and size, but it comes with Windows 11. Consider installing free Linux instead. Let's proceed to do that now and compare. I chose to install the most popular Ubuntu, which has some downsides but is a typical modern Linux. We go to the official website, download the ISO image for the latest version, insert a USB drive, and write the image using Rufus. We keep all settings default, plug the USB into the mini PC, and boot from the menu using F7, select USB, and the loading begins. First, a few settings, language and keyboard. It's better to choose English for convenience. Linux images have a cool feature. Before installation, you can use the system directly from the USB drive, try it out, and if you like it, then install it. We will install it immediately. We choose the interactive installation since this is our first time, an advanced installation to customize more, adding drivers and third-party applications. Now, the most important step, Windows is installed on the mini PC, and thus there is a Windows boot manager. But to set everything up correctly, we choose not the first option, but the third manual installation. For Windows, four partitions are needed on the disk, three of which are hidden, and the main one, Drive C, can be identified by its size, which is 510 gigabytes. Let's partition it. We select it and click Modify, then enter the new size. Now we have free space where we will create partitions for the Linux system. These can be created by selecting this free space and clicking the plus. We don't need much for the system partition. Let's make it 30 gigabytes, but it can be more depending on your preferences. Set the mount point to the root directory. This selection is mandatory. We create a partition in the free space with the mount point home for storing personal files. Create your personal user account and easily set up the login. Remember the password. You will need to use it periodically to install programs and configure the system. That's all for now. And while the installation is ongoing, Let's make our first comparison of Windows and Linux functionality. Evaluate potential losses from switching to Linux. This system has an application installer similar to App Store or Play Market, which features many different popular applications, especially free ones, because Linux is an open source OS. That's the essence of this project. There are also applications for gaming, such as Steam, and you can run the same games as on Windows. However, if you use any paid programs on Windows, they may not be available on Linux. But don't rush to get upset. You can install Wine or an alternative application that assists you in running standard Windows.exe applications seamlessly within the Linux environment. Alternatively, you can discover various other programs that may have different names in Linux, yet they can still effectively meet your needs. Instead of Windows Office, this offers applications that support the same document and spreadsheet formats. This takes time. You need to explore new programs, but Linux users lose nothing in terms of functionality. Developers often prefer Linux because it provides a wide range of convenient, free tools that greatly assist with their tasks. So considering that you can use both Linux and Windows programs, there is no difference in functionality. Let's reboot the PC now that our system is installed to proceed with the comparison. Windows boots on the computer, ignoring the Linux bootloaders. To change this setting, we need to enter the BIOS configuration and locate the boot priorities. This is convenient because the bootloader seamlessly includes both Ubuntu and Windows operating systems. The second comparison involves analyzing the amount of time it takes for the computer to fully boot up. What do you think? Which OS will boot faster? In fact, modern OSes boot quickly, especially since there's a small but fast SSD drive here. Most of the boot time is taken up by the BIOS loading, as fast boot is currently disabled, and the logo is displayed for a few seconds. As a result, both systems boot up at the same impressive speed, and it genuinely feels like they are intelligently adjusting to one another to maximize overall performance. Resource Consumption Ubuntu has an analog of the task manager, called the Resource Monitor or System Monitor, and interestingly, there are quite a few processes that support the system's operation. How much RAM is used? 
22 gigabytes out of 12. The CPU cores experience a load ranging from 2% to 16% while idle. Here's what occurred in Windows on this computer. It specifically loaded the CPU even when idle up to 100%. Antivirus processes ran continuously, with automatic updates downloaded and installed alongside other background tasks. But after optimization and disabling the antivirus, updates, and removing a bunch of built-in programs and services with my program, the task manager's picture became just like it is now in Linux by default. This is not the lightest version of Linux and lacks optimization. I'm not an expert on it, as I focus on optimizing Windows, but I think there's still a lot that can be trimmed and adjusted here to free up even more resources. So in this comparison, Linux is definitely better. Please share your suggestions in the comments for optimizing Ubuntu if you have expertise. And if you use Windows and don't know about the PC Problems program yet, download the latest version from my website. It has many cool features, including deep cleaning of Drive C from junk. The free version offers many features, but the best ones are exclusive to the pro version. No companies invest in me quite like they do in Ubuntu. Our growth relies solely on your use of the pro version of the software and your continued engagement with this channel. And my program will continue to develop. There are currently several goals to significantly improve and add to it. The link to it is below. 4. Processor Performance we will assess it with the Cinebench benchmark. To run it, I had to install Wine. Currently, it's not in the standard list in Ubuntu, so I had to update it and connect Debian installers. Running Wine is now less convenient, as I have to use the terminal to launch it. But the results surprised me a bit. The benchmark involves several calculations that intensely stress the CPU. How well it handles them shows how powerful it is. I thought there would be no difference from Windows. The CPU's performance isn't impressive, as Windows 11 shows similar default and optimized numbers. The highest score was 2709, but in Ubuntu, the benchmark showed a maximum of 2874, which is a 6% increase. Perhaps if there were optimizations or a different build, it could have been even higher. So, Linux can clearly be called the winner here. And the fifth comparison, convenience. At this point, the advantages of Linux systems end, and billions of users still install Windows and even buy licenses for Windows, as well as other convenient programs. Linux is understandable, and you can get used to it. Ubuntu resembles Android, while Linux Mint is more like Windows. However, it takes considerable time to effectively relearn, and many users began their computing journey with Windows and are reluctant to invest time in retraining. Also, commercial programs often have more incentive for development than free ones, resulting in them being more thought out and functional. And the biggest downside is the Linux terminal interface, without which you can't accomplish much. Basic tasks and settings are included, yes, but not much else beyond that. Even to install Vine now and run the program from Windows, I had to use the terminal. In this comparison, I cannot say Linux is superior. Windows remains more convenient. What conclusion can we draw? Is it worthwhile to install Linux instead of Windows on a budget mini PC? Functionality and boot speed are the same, but in terms of resource consumption and performance, Linux is better. However, there will be nuances in usability. There is definitely a reason to use Linux, especially if the mini PC will be used with a TV or projector as a media center or for office programs and programming. In any case, you can try it out and make your own decision. Share your conclusions or ideas in the comments. It will be very interesting to read. See you there.